to infinity and beyond. In today's video, I'll be analyzing a company that might be the future of space travel, and so I'll be analyzing the company Maritime Launch Services with the ticker MAXQ. As always, I'll start by analyzing what is the business model of the company, so how are they able to generate their income and who are their different customers, and after, I'll make a quick fundamental analysis on the company to see if it is currently under or overvalued. Unfortunately, since this company has just been added to the stock market, I don't currently have enough information to make a full price prediction on it. Without losing too much time, let's get to it right now. Maritime Launch Services is a Canadian space transport company which is currently located in Nova Scotia, and it is currently Canada's first commercial spaceport, and one among the 35 global commercial spaceports and launching facilities, which are notably designed to launch spacecraft and satellites in orbits, suborbit, and beyond. However, Maritime Launch Services is currently in its experimental stage because since the beginning of 2022, they've been working on the construction of their different facilities in Nova Scotia, but on the website of the company where the investors can find a lot of important information, they've said at the end of February 2023 that they have just finished the access roads to the different sites and now they've been starting to work on the launch pad. And another great news for the investors is that the Canadian government has recently said at the beginning of the year that they were accepting the project, which is also implying that they might eventually start to raise some funds for this company. And this is a really good news if you're an investor because it means that if a government is backing up this company, it must be because it is a great company. Plus on their side, this business has the objective to be able to launch multiple kind of satellites to be able, for example, to track the climate change, gather new data and analyze them, to also be able to detect different changes that could happen to the earth or to the other planets around that might be important for us, to have protective eyes on our borders, to increase the connectivity of remote towns and hospitals, and obviously to explore new modes of space exploration, plus to increase their chance to be successful when they launch their new satellites in the future. They have chosen a strategic location close to Kanzo in Nova Scotia. Indeed, by choosing this particular location, they made sure that they were far enough of the local population, whilst in close enough of the utilities, the workforce, and the transportation infrastructure. Plus, this location is giving them some great range of launching inclinations from east to south on the Atlantic Ocean without having any obstructions of hazards on the edge of the ocean. And this is without talking about the economical impact that this new business will have on the population by, for example, creating hundreds of new jobs in the region and by increasing Nova Scotia GDP by approximately $250 million. Plus, an interesting point is that most spaceports in the world at the moment are regulated by the governments, meaning that they are mainly focusing in the defense and in the federal use. But as the global space economy already started to shift, Nova Scotia commercial site will not only be the first Canadian site of this kind, but also a premier worldwide destination. And at the moment, their main partners that will help them to create the new kind of rockets and satellites that they will launch is the Ukrainian company Yuzmoy and Yuzmash, which have already created an interesting prototype which is called the Cyclone 4M. Personally, how I see this company is pretty much the same as I saw Tesla a couple of years ago, where Tesla a couple of years ago wasn't really producing a lot of electric cars, but the investors were investing in that companies for the future. So it is pretty much the same for this kind of company that is in its experimental stage at the moment, but at the same time, it is still backed by the government. I could even say that it is some kind of SpaceX company, but as being a public company in which you can invest. And personally, as a proud Canadian, I am pretty happy about this kind of company coming in in our country because it will create obviously a lot of new jobs, but at the same time, it will also create some great infrastructure that we are needing for the future in this country. But on your side, keep in mind that this company at the moment is a penny stock that is trading at less than 50 cents per share which also means that it is super volatile. Plus, at the moment, this company currently worth less than $100 million, but the first launching are predicted to start in spring. And if those launching are successful, obviously this company could rapidly skyrocket in value. But before that, you can see if this company is a great pick or not for you. Let's make a quick fundamental analysis on it. 
For the valuation measures of this company, we can currently see that it's worth about $66 million. But however, as I told you earlier, it still doesn't have a lot of financial information. So we cannot see what is its current price to earning ratio. And we don't currently have access to its profit and its operating margin. However, over the last 12 months, we can see that it has had some pretty poor return on assets and return on equity, which is notably due to the fact that this company at the moment isn't able to generate any kinds of revenue. However, a good news for this company is that they currently don't have too much debt only about seven million dollars compared to five million dollars in cash and obviously because the stock has been on the market for less than one year we won't have access to its beta on the five years period but judging by its great past performance over the last year of about 13 percent of gain compared to the less 10 percent for the overall market we can see that this stock might have a little bit more volatility compared to the overall market and an interesting fact about this company that I wanted to talk is the percentage of the shares held by insiders. So basically the percentage of the company that is currently held by the different directors of the company. And as you can see, about 50% of the total value of the business is currently held by its directors, compared to only 6% that is currently held by institutions, which is a pretty good news in my opinion, because at the moment this is a company that is not really known by many people. But judging by those numbers, we can extrapolate that the directors and all the chiefs of this company have a lot of trust into it and as i told you earlier this company is still not generating any kind of revenue but as any companies it still have a lot of different expenses from operations but also interest expense on the debt that they currently have but as you see it makes that over the last two years they have generated some negative net income and in terms of their cash flow from operating activities we can see that it's pretty much the same where they are negative at the moment which obviously directly impact their free cash flow which are the same over the last two years as you've been able to see in this video, this company has a lot of potential for the future, especially by acting in the space exploration field, which might be a new golden opportunity for the investors. Plus, despite not being able to generate a lot of income at the moment, if the government is really backing up this company and that it is able to raise some fund for it, well, it might be a great opportunity for the investors that are willing to take the risk. Because in fact, penny stocks have the attribute to have a lot of risk, but at the same time to have a lot of potential of reward but on your side if you're looking to invest in companies that have less risk but that also have a lot of potential of growth in the future well check out the video that's gonna be right over here on the best canadian dividend stocks and i will see you soon peace